it is official. The 2022 World Cup has kicked off, and it is kicked off with a bang. At least, as far as I'm concerned. Because I get to sit here and discuss what seems to be a very controversial offside decision. And I get to sit here and tell you exactly why the official was 100% correct to disallow this goal for offside. So let's take a look at it. Alright, so ball gets played in. Keeper comes rushing out. It's not entirely clear who gets a touch on the ball there. We see it falls down, bounces, headed by an Ecuadorian player, crossed, and Ender Valencia is on the end of it to head it home. All right, so this is the angle that I believe shows that the uh, Ecuadorian attacking player does get a header on the ball. So let's look at that. All right, so we see here, ball comes in. Let's wait for it, wait for it here. All right, let's go frame by frame and I'll show you. All right, so we can see here, the ball is going to take two movements. Between these two frames, the ball is going to shift slightly right. See, right here, shift slightly right from there to there. So I think it's safe to say that the keeper does get a slight touch on it. But then after it shifts right, we go straight up. And there is no way that we have this movement from the ball and this movement from the ball and that both of these directional changes from the ball are a result of the keeper punching it. That's just, that doesn't make any sense. So I think it's pretty clear that we have the keeper punching the ball onto the head of the Ecuadorian attacking player. And then it rebounds up. Which then we follow the play. It goes, it goes, goes. Right there, misses it, bounces down. And then we have our Ecuadorian attacker in question playing the ball. All right, so for those of you unfamiliar with the IFAB laws of the game, we're going to take a look at Law 11 offside to see what relevant information are in the laws of the game to help us understand whether or not this play is offside or not. All right, so 11.1 defines what an offside position is. I'm not going to go into detail because I assume that for the most part, everyone understands what that is. If you need help, the wording is right here. But we're going to scroll down to 11.2. All right, 11.2, an offside offense. So this is where the information we're looking for is. A player in an offside position at the moment the ball is played or touched by a teammate is only penalized on becoming involved in active play by interfering with play or by playing or touching a ball passed or touched by a teammate. All right, this is important here. Passed or touched. Now this means that it doesn't matter whether or not it's an intentional pass by a teammate or if it's just a deflection and it just touches off an attacking player and falls to another attacking player that's in an offside position, or at least was in an offside position at the moment of that touch. So in this situation here, it doesn't matter that the keeper is the first one to touch the ball because it ricochets off the attacking player. And after that touch, no other player touches or plays the ball until this touch here. So let's say, as a hypothetical, if instead of the ball coming off the keeper onto the attacking player's head and then going up, let's say instead that the ball went off the attacker and off the keeper, would that then negate the offsides? No, it wouldn't. The player would still be offsides. And the reason for that is because a player in an offside position at the moment the ball is played or touched by a teammate is only penalized on becoming involved in active play by... In this scenario, gaining an advantage by playing the ball or interfering with an opponent when it has rebounded or been deflected off the goalpost, crossbar, match official, or an opponent, or has been deliberately saved by an opponent. In this scenario, we can say that the touch off the keeper would either be deemed as a deliberate save by the keeper, which doesn't negate offside, or it would be a rebound or a deflection off of an opponent, which does not negate the offside. In either case, this player here has still committed an offside offense if he was in an offside position at the moment of the touch from his teammate. We can clearly see that at the moment of the touch off the attacking Ecuadorian player here, the player in question is clearly beyond the second to last defender, which in this case is in line with the back of the goalkeeper here, or this defending player here. Either way, 
he is clearly beyond both of them.